Life is so much better with color in it, in my opinion. I don't want to think at all, I just want to bake. Hello! Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Knits by Mandy. My name is Amanda and today we have the 16th episode of the Knits by Mandy podcast. It has been a hot minute since I've sat down and recorded something for the channel. I went on vacation earlier this month with my family to the beach. I've been having some issues with my summer knitting. So in between I'm wanting to take some time just to relax and unplug and also having to be kind of stop and go on some projects, I didn't have a whole lot to show. So I figured I'd sit down and give you a recap of what I've been working on this past month. So we can start off with what I'm wearing. This is a tank top that I drafted for myself using Terrapin Fibers Chesapeake Cotton in the colorway Fennel. And let me just tell you the backstory of why I ended up just kind of going rogue and creating a pattern on the fly. I had originally planned to make a pattern from Barocco Yarns called, I think, Cordon or Cardin. I don't even know. I'm not recommending that pattern because the sizing was really off. I had cast it on a few times, I think since the beginning of July, cast it on and off, I had to rip back because it was just coming out too big. And on the 34th try, I just decided I am so done with things not fitting correctly or I'm thinking they're going to fit correctly and then I get like five or six rows in and it's very clear that they won't. And so I'm just going to try this myself. I had a very specific image for what I wanted for this tank top and for this yarn specifically. I wanted something that was bra friendly, scoop neck, and that fit not tight to the body, but close to the body. And I found that it was kind of hard to find a pattern for that in a DK weight. I felt kind of limited with my options as far as patterns went. And I didn't think that this was something completely out of my abilities or reach. So I decided just to go for it. And using my gauge swatch that I had made previously, I did some math and I hacked a quick little pattern for this tank top. Give you a closer look so you can see, uh, it is a broken rib tank top. I decided to end up going for the broken rib and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but this is what the front looks like and the sides and the back. It has a split hem, super easy to do. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about the construction. I wrote out a more in-depth review of what I did on this tank top in my Ravelry notes that has all kind of like the numbers of stitches I cast it on, etc. And so if that's of interest to you, if we have similar measurements, that will be in Ravelry and also in the down bar below, as well as my measurements at the very end of the down bar. Walk you through the construction of this tank top and how it went. In conjunction with my gauge swatch and my measurements that I already have, I also compared it to the Ingrid top, which I recently fixed earlier this summer. I find that's really helpful for me when I'm maybe hacking a pattern or trying to figure out how big I want a garment to be by just like using another garment as a guide. I am a very visual person and I have a hard time visualizing things in my head, so it's much more helpful if I can just see it laid out. But that's where I got the measurement for how long and how much I should cast on for the back panel. So using my gauge swatch, I calculated how many stitches I should cast on for the back panel um, to kind of give a little bit of space difference in between, you know, the neck and for armhole shaping. And then I compared that to my bust measurement. I did some math to figure out how often I should increase um, given the length from my shoulders to where I wanted the tank top to fall, and then I was off to the races. On a whim, I decided to start knitting this in broken rib. I was knitting the other top in stockinette, and I was just getting a little bored, and I have my dress project, which I have had been working on and off with the past month or so, um, like fall starting, and I'll talk more about that, and I just knew like more stockinette was in my future, and I decided I wanted to break it up and I also know I really like items that have a little added texture. Something about Broken Rib, I've never knit it before. It's really nice texturally. Uh, it reminds me of kind of like waffle blankets or like waffle 
uh, Henleys or even like those baby blankets. I had waffle baby blankets. So like this texture is very comforting to me. I had bought like an entire like queen sized waffle quilt blanket for our bedroom just because I like how that feels. Like, I don't know. I just like, like how it feels. So um, broken rib is super easy if you haven't knit it before. You alternate doing one row in one by one ribbing and the other row is a knit row. Honestly, I enjoyed the variation more than just doing stockinette. I'm figuring that I might be somewhat of a process knitter. Now that I have a little bit more experience, I am finding more enjoyment in either a challenge or just doing something differently than just plain stockinette. It's not that I don't enjoy stockinette, but you know, it's good to have that variation and I'm realizing that more uh, this summer with some of the things that I've been making. That's a helpful piece of knowledge to put away just as I'm thinking about planning and picking out patterns moving forward. I was like, oh yeah, I'm kind of like going crazy just knitting stockinette tank tops. So that's part of the reason why I decided to add just a little bit of texture into this piece. I knit the back and I increased along the armpits uh, at the rate it'll be listed in my Ravelry notes, made it to my desired length and to where, you know, it would hit on my bust. Then I picked up stitches on one side. I think I picked up 11 stitches and knit a few inches before adding three or four stitches to the neckline and then three or four stitches here. And then I cast on a number of stitches that would make it similar to what the length was on the back side. Once I did that, I joined the two sides and then knit down to where the back panel was. And then I joined everything in the round and I started knitting down. From there, it was pretty simple. I was just knitting broken rib in the round. And then in order to achieve a split hem, I put the front stitches on hold, I knit the back, and at this point I was kind of running low on yarn, so I wanted to make sure that, if anything, I would want the back to be maybe just a little bit longer. I think they're around, they should be the same length. It might be possible that the front is one or two rows shorter, but nothing I don't think you can really notice. So I knit the back, I cast off in pattern, and then I picked up the front stitches and did the same exact thing. I was debating doing an I cord edge like I did on the armholes and on the neck hole, but I decided just to leave it. I actually don't know if I'll have a, I would have enough yarn to do that anyway. Um, so I'm also very happy that I used up most of the yarn that I needed to. The finishing at the end, I did an applied eye cord to the collar and to the armholes. I feel like you can, on the armholes, it really just blends in with the pattern. And I like the finish that it gives the scoop neck. I made a bra friendly pattern, which I'm very happy about. I mean, sometimes my straps will like poke out, but that's just like wearing tank tops. And I'm just happy. I'm very proud of myself. I don't think pattern designing is near my future at all in any means, but I'd like to know that I have the skills to at least make things fit for me. I don't know if I, I don't, I don't know. I do know I don't have the skills to make garments that fit a range of bodies. I enjoy doing the work to figure out how to make this and make something that fits me. Overall, I'm really happy with this piece. The yarn was nice. It was just Terrapin Fiberworks regular cotton base, and I believe they have a Pima cotton base. I wouldn't say this cotton was special or super soft. I know some people can be very sensitive about cotton. I'm kind of getting done <laughs> with summer fibers. I'm I'm reaching my limit. This was nice to work with and I like the finished fabric. I find often with summer yarns, maybe the process of holding them and working with them isn't the most satisfying, but that I really like the finished fabrics that they create. Love a cotton tank. Very important for me to have light, breathable things where I live in the summer and I am really in love with the color. I was reticent about it and because I don't own a lot of things that have a yellow undertone or that are yellowy and I very much feel this is on the verge of grello. It's a very like lime green with strong yellow undertones. You can even see when you get closer to the yarn there are just some like yellow spots within it and I always 
at least I think that I have like a golden undertone to my skin. And so that yellow isn't a good match. I don't really know how strong or reliable this line of thinking is, but I usually stay away from yellow or like goldish things. I'm wearing gold jewelry. I stay away from yellow and like yellow colors in general, but maybe I should stop doing that is what I'm saying. Cause I feel like this is, this is nice. I've really just enjoyed how much knitting has opened me up to color. I used to have like a fully gray and black wardrobe, believe it or not. And life is so much better with color in it, in my opinion. I've just been enjoying that and, you know, getting to use all the beautiful yarns and invite more color and joy into my life this way. So that is my self-drafted tank. I think I listed it on Ravelry under in, under It's Not Easy Being Grello. Shout out Kermit the Frog. And yeah, that's it. Let's move on to some whip updates and some future plannings. I promise I will update you all on the dress saga, but first I have another tank top cast on, and this is a stockinette tank top. This is the June Top by Petite Knit, and I'm knitting this in another Terrapin Fiberworks yarn. This is the Potomac DK. It is a 75 cotton, 25% linen blend, and this is in the colorway Onion. I just saw the Barbie movie this weekend, and I just cast it on on Sunday. Um, or no, I cast it on Friday night, but then I was like, it's pink for Barbie. Gorgeous yarn that has a white base and pink and darker pink speckles throughout, kind of reminiscent of the skin of a red onion. And I have just been meaning to knit both of these yarns up since I got them earlier this spring. I made sure to gaze swatch all of my yarns that I've been planning to use this summer. And I originally set out to make the Cora top, but I realized my gauge was like one or two stitches off and that my gauge was closer to that of the June top. The core top is a more size inclusive option for a tank top like the June top. To be totally transparent after all my gauge issues, I just wanted to buy something that I know would fit me. It is a very simple petite knit pattern. I honestly probably think I could have figured it out if I wanted to, but I decided I didn't. After making this, I was like, no think. I don't want to think at all. I just want to make. Just cast it on this weekend and want to have this going. I still have a few more tops that I want to make this summer. Uh, I think what I'll prioritize making is this and the vacation vest. And then I have a few more plans that I'll tell you about. So, so far I'm really enjoying this. I can already tell this has a little bit more drape than the cotton uh, because of the linen that's blended into the yarn. And it also has just a different um, twist. I promise this isn't sponsored by Terrapin Fireworks, but um, I just have had these yarns in my stash for a minute. It's the cotton and this is the cotton and linen blend. And I think you can see this has just an added aspect of texture to it like a twist perhaps because of the strands twisted together um, and this just feels more smooth to the touch but this I feel like will have more drape once it's done because of the linen and I'll have to be honest I wasn't sure how I was going to like this fabric knit up but I think I like it and I think Barbie is helping me like it even more I'm not sure if it completely translates well on camera but it's more important it's more important that i like it in person so this will just be another easy breezy summer tank talk to have i have to admit i am just feeling like kind of over summer knitting i'm gonna say it i'm gonna say it i'm over it i think just because i've had so many issues with the dress and this tank top and na, 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 i'm just like done I haven't, I haven't felt that excited about it. I'll be really honest. I was really excited about it at the start of the season and now I'm just like, when's it time to knit sweaters? And I know I can knit a sweater anytime, but I also have these yarns and I'd like to use them. So really trying to strike the balance of like <laughs> making things that I'll wear and also enjoying myself. It's not that I'm not completely enjoying myself. It's that just like, I have that like restlessness that I'm just like ready for wool. But honestly, like I, I'm taking my knitting with me to the pool. I was knitting on the beach. I just can't, can't even think about touching wool right now anyway. 
So that's where I'm at. That's where I am. And it is just so useful to have these kinds of things where I live. It's not even like it's a non-useful garment. Um, I'll be wearing these things into September anyway. So, but yeah, I, that's probably, I mean, the lack of content, the lack of um, maybe excitement. And I don't, obviously it's hard to want to kind of turn on the camera when you're not feeling super jazzed about what you're making. But you know, that is a real um, thing that people face. I did not mention, I'm getting the size small in this because I cast on the medium and it did not look, it looked too big. So I'm casting on the small and I know that this will grow um, even though the small is like a few inches off from my actual bus size. I don't know what is happening with Gage this summer and I'm deciding to stop caring and just like figure it out. That is my June top whip and I hope to have this done definitely by the end of the month, next, by the end of August. The next thing is that I am going on a trip to Italy in September, which I'm very excited about, and I wanna have some freaking knit tops to take with me. So that's also part of it. All right, let's go in to the Milady's dress. I don't have much different to show you, but trust me, I have cracked on and retried and retried this pattern a few times now. So I believe when I last filmed, I had just tried a new provisional cast on and I was like, it works, it fits, it looks so good. It did not work, it did not fit, it did not look so good. Let me walk you through what I've tried so far and also a lot of the helpful feedback I got on Instagram of how to troubleshoot or different methods that I could try to help this fix. And now, Fourth or fifth time is the charm. I think I finally figured it out and I will get to that. First thing I tried, crochet provisional cast on. Made my gauge really, really big. At the first two rows, it was like 11 inches when it's supposed to be like 26 or 28 unlocked. That did not work. I tried the provisional cast on method with a bar record, which is genius. Still didn't work, was still too big. And then I was like, what? I was really upset. And that's when I took to Instagram and I was like, please help me. Why is this not right? Everyone listed some really helpful tips. Some of them included using the Kalyak provisional cast on method, which I think involves using spare yarn instead of like a needle or a barber cord, like Judy's magic cast on or the method that I used. Judy's Magic Cast On was another idea that people offered. Some people wanted to make sure that I was pulling, that I wasn't stretching out the yarn from frogging and re-knitting. And I will reassure you that I had started new balls each time to avoid that issue. I also had messages from people who were making the dress and they said to stick with it and to not give up yet. And I really appreciated that because I have really, fallen in love with the idea of this dress. I have pictured what it'll look like on me. I've pictured just having it hanging in my wardrobe. I've just been kind of, not kind of, I have been fixated on this dress since May and the idea of having a knit dress probably since April. And yes, it's very frustrating that it's the end of July and it doesn't feel like I have anything to show for it. But I do, I have lots of knowledge. A few folks, also mentioned, why don't you just pick up the stitches and just skip the provisional cast on altogether? And I was like, yes. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think about that. I have been reticent to alter the pattern too much. I have been afraid of like irreversibly and irrevocably and horribly catastrophically changing the pattern in a way that when I come back to it, it's not going to look as good. However, I decided we have to try something. So I tried that, it was still too big. And then I, I let it sit, I cast on the June top and I was like, okay. <sighs> I'm so tired of refrogging. The process of just like getting this project started feels so tedious to me. You cast on and the first thing you do is knit into a pearl, like you knit on the wrong side and it's just like, 
crowning stitches and purling them on the wrong side. I know that sounds, it is easy technically, but it, it, like mental block there was huge to have to do that each time. I have found that when I'm just more ready, ready to like frog back and work right away, that's, I mean, how we're gonna figure it out. And so I decided I needed to knit a size down. So I tried that and it was still too big. So now what do I have on my needles? I have it two sizes down, no three. I've knit three waist measurement size down and it finally pulls across my body tautly, which is what I want because this dress is intended to be worn with around zero inches of ease and the silk is going to grow, grow, grow baby once it is blocked and once it is worn. So I still don't know the root problem of my gauge issues, but I have two postulations, if you will. The first that I definitely know for sure is the provisional cast on messed up my gauge, but I don't think it is still back to completely normal because if I had just regularly cast on and then with my with my regular size, that should have technically fit. The other thing that I can only think of is that my gauge is just much bigger when knitting on a wider project than just a gauge swatch. And I am just knitting differently and I may just have a very different knitting style than the pattern designer. The other part about the gauge swatch, but I have made multiple. The first gauge swatch I made, she wants you to do linen stitch for six rounds on the top. And I wondered if that hold my stitches in. Um, but then I also did swatches without the linen stitch. So I don't know. I don't think it's that. So those are my two guesses. I don't know what else it literally could be. I am nervous about moving forward. I think I was also very scared to try new sizes, but theoretically it should work that if this is, if going down three sizes for my original is what makes the waist fit that should be true for the other three measurements that you use as a size reference which are your bust your high hip and your hip <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> what i'm really worried about i guess is the top i'm not so much worried about my like how the skirt flares out of course i want it to fit nicely but i definitely want it to fit the the best up here and just I just need to make sure that it kind of flares out at my hips at the right at the right spot I'm less worried about how that will look than all of this that is where I'm at with the dress now while I was doing that I almost reached a point of completely giving up about last week and I decided I needed something else to help motivate me and I decided <laughs> and I might regret this, that I wanna knit another dress because I don't know when I'll finish this one and I still really want a dress. So another dress pattern that I was looking at during this whole process was the Winona dress by Sari Nordlin. I had originally decided to not make it because I felt that the yarn would be too heavy because it is made in a bulky weight yarn. It is made in Santa Scarn's Teak Line and I was like, mm, looks really heavy. It still might be heavy. I will be so upfront with you. Sorry Northern's picture is of her in Italy wearing this dress and I'm like, that could be me. Me and Sorry Nordland, that could be me. We'll see, I actually have the notification that it's delivered and if I have time before putting this video up, I will put in a clip of the colorway I got. Santa Scarn pink, the shocking pink color is very attractive to me. And I think I will knit that in tandem with this one. We'll see how that goes. I did buy like a hundred dollars worth of bulky weight cotton linen yarn, which I might completely regret. And the dress is pretty simple. It is a kind of triangle camisole tank top, um, like up top. And then I think it's basically knit straight down. I actually don't even know if there's waist shaping, but I did see that someone on Ravelry did put in waist shaping. And now that I'm making this dress, I'm like, I can figure that out. We're doing it. I don't know if that's completely reckless and stupid and I'll, I'll regret it, but the wheels are already in motion. <laughs> Maybe that's the lesson learned. I don't think that's the lesson learned. 
So I know I just said I'm over summer knitting, but at the same time, two things can be true. I can be over summer knitting and have an intense innate desire to have knit dresses. And I can hold those in my hand at the same time because I am a woman who contains multitudes, baby. So that will be my next future proj. Also still navigating how to be a non-monogamous knitter. It's very new to me and like, kind of fun, but also a little overwhelming. But overall, it's definitely helping me in this time. I think thinking forward for the fall, I'm gonna wanna knit a blanket. I'm gonna wanna knit something that I absolutely have no desire to help fit my body. And a blanket sounds really, really nice. And I just wanna knit a bunch of comfortable sweaters. So that's, I, I'm my head's there. I'll be so honest, my head's there but I still have some things that I wanna get done this season. So far we have the June top, we have the Milady's dress, which I know I will not finish this summer. I mean, I could, but that's gonna be a longer term project. And then hopefully finishing the Winona dress in the short term. If I could have the Winona dress by Italy, that would be ideal. And if I could also have the vacation vest by Park and Knit with the um, creative color changing tweed, held with Kotlin by Knit Picks done, that'd be great. I also have this Kotlin coming in the mail. I had a few balls in my stash, but I needed more. Um, but I don't think that's super exciting to show you. It's just a white cotton linen yarn, a colorful tweed here, and I like it. It's a good bang for your buck. Um, and I have that also coming on the way. So feeling good. It's good to have a, a POA, as they say, on Love Island and Honestly, even just talking through it with you all and sitting here and like being with my things is making me feel a little bit better about everything. I still have my tapestry project. I have the blue one. I need at some point to cast on the yellow one, but I probably won't do that until after or later in September. And I'm also thinking about what I want to bring on my trip to Italy in September. I'm not sure yet. So we'll see where I'm at with everything then. All right. We have culture to talk about people. We have media recommendations to speak about. And there are a lot of things that I've consumed. Love Island. I've been loving it. I've been enjoying it. It's like every day I'm, I'm watching my episode. I'm getting caught up without giving you like a full thesis and breakdown of what I think about everything. But I am constantly so refreshed and enthused by it from an American viewpoint is how much the show laughs at itself. We don't have any shows, any romantic reality shows, I feel like in America that do the same thing that Love Island is doing. I know there's a Love Island US, but like you could not get me to watch that because I don't think we could recreate what this has. And I think that obviously American and maybe British or UK humor is very different. It's, I think in the UK, they're a bit more like, I think they're just a bit more like witty and dry and Americans are maybe more kind of like in your face or has to be kind of very like on the nose humor, especially on these like mass cable networks. But the fact that they can create such a funny and engaging show without alcohol is so impressive to me. And I think I said this last year in my review of Love Island, like they have to get people so drunk on The Bachelor and Bachelorette. And that is the most like AI, CGI, like robotic show that people are just tired of watching. And the other aspect is that a lot of reality shows in the US are at their core, extremely puritanical. That is just like a theme that you see in the reality shows. And I am of the opinion that it doesn't make for an exciting reality show. And I'm sorry, it just doesn't. And I think that seeing the way they do it on Love Island, I know I wouldn't say like the UK's like free love, whatever, it, but it's markedly different than what we have in the States. That's just my characterization from my point of view. I am so entertained. I would say favorite couple is Whitney and Lockham. I think it's insane that they kept Mitch on, but he's so messy. And I kind of want to see what happens with Ella B. So I kind of respect it. 
I'm loving everyone right now, honestly. I, I think it's great. I'm enjoying myself. I'm gonna be really sad when it's over and there's gonna be a Love Island sized hole in my heart. The next reality shows, what I wanna talk about, um, I wanted to do like a whole reality sit down and chat, but then like the moment of scandal all passed and now like these new Bravo shows are just getting started. So I've been watching Real Housewives of Orange County and Real Housewives of New York City. And these are some of the oldest, uh, I think they're the two oldest Real Housewives franchises on Bravo. And I think they're having two interesting things are happening right now. New York has a full new cast. Um, Real Housewives of Orange County doesn't, but there's a tone shift happening with both of these franchises as we've come out of the pandemic laden seasons, which were all very heavy and obviously uncomfortable, understandably, but as a viewer, it was not entertaining to watch. And that's why we come to watch reality TV. We come to be entertained. Um, it was not entertaining to watch very affluent, wealthy white women come to terms with everything that we were coming to terms with in 2020. I was just like, it's like a train wreck. And it's like, yes, this is a look into America, but also a very limited and privileged American view. And it was just a lot. It, it, they were put on pause and it flopped. I didn't watch all of Orange County when the pandemic seasons were on, but with Bronwyn, I just remember like that also not going too hot. It was not great. It was not fun. And now I've only watched the first episode of Roni, but I've kept up with Orange County. And for both, there is this return to levity and frivolity, is that the word? Like frivolousness uh, that I think is welcome by the public. And that I think is just an interesting marker of where we are as a country. Um, obviously we've all been through a lot the past few years and there is I think an intense and innate need to have this kind of escapism. And I think that means returning to the, the, the Ronies and the ROHCs of yesteryear. Other franchises also had really, really heavy plot lines with Jen Shaw and also like Erica Jane and all of that. Like it's like, it's thick and it weighs in the room. And yes, it sometimes makes for good TV, but at the end of the day, you're done with that season and you're like, and now we're kind of back to something lighter. Like in this first episode of Real Housewives of New York, they're arguing about cheese and like arguing about a restaurant and <laughs> how they don't want to go there. And they're blurring out <laughs> the name of the restaurant and like blurring their mouths so you can't lip read. It's hilarious. Like I found that so funny. Um, and I, I just think it's interesting. And I think this, this furthers my point that reality television will always reflect the culture in its current moment and it is a mirror uh, up to what you know our country values our society values um and of course i think it's fascinating and i'll always stand by that so i've been enjoying that and noticing that those those like themes in our in our television coming back and it will be very interesting now the writers and the actors strike Last time that there was a writer strike, it caused for a huge increase in unscripted reality television because you don't have to write scripts for it. And I'm anticipating we will see the same thing um, as these strikes continue, um, which I'm in support of the unions, but I'm, I'm in anticipating to see these networks put out more reality television and it'll be interesting to see where things go, I think in this current day and age of where reality television will go. I know this kind of started as like a media review and it's now just come into like Amanda's reality television hour at the end of my podcast. So I'm, 
<laughs> I'm still watching The Sopranos with my boyfriend. We are making it through. We just got to season five. So we have just season five and then the two-parter season six to go. And holy moly, that show is so good. You have to watch it. It's amazing. Honestly, that's like, I've been watching Love Island in reality television and I couldn't be happier about it. So that's what I have been watching. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you all being here so, so much. And I would love to hear about what kind of videos you'd like to see from me towards this last half of the summer. I don't think I'm quite ready to start planning for fall yet. Um, so I'm just kind of thinking about what might be fun to see in this transitional time, maybe a few vlogs or things like that. So with that, I will leave you all to it and I will see y'all soon. Bye.